I am Agnieszka Holland, director of the film Charlatan. Máte představu, proč jste tady, Mikolášku? Byl jsem řečen už několikrát, předpokládám, že kvůli udání. Předpokládáte špatně. Rád bych si zatelefonoval. Komu? Pan ministr Duriš se u mě nedávno lečel se záduchou. Nikam volat nebudete. Chci, aby to byl můj advokát. Váš advokát? Doktor Finch. Bývalý předseda advokátní komory zastupuje mě už 20 let. Doktor Finch. Časy se změnily. Pane zázračný. Jak to se mnou mluvíte? Dneska už se nikdo nevyhne spravedlnosti tím, že si koupí drahýho advokáta. Já znám si práva. Vy už žádný práva nemáte, Mikolášku. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jombor Bobak and this time we are discussing the film Charlatan with director Agnieszka Holland. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. It's very lovely Hello. to have you here with us. Um, can you maybe just start telling us um, what drove you to this true story that you based the film on? What was so exciting for you about, about, this, about, about these true events? Um, if you cannot feel it from the movie, it means that I was stupid. I think that what attracted me, it was the complexity of the story and the complexity of the main character mm -hmm. and of the both characters yeah. somehow. And um, a lot of the mystery and, you know, unsolved and unspoken um, ambitions, desires, hopes, yeah. uh, passions, which could be realized if the society around wasn't hostile. Yeah. And it's not only the relation um, of two men, but it's also um, an execution of, of um, Mikolášek's um, healing passion. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in the film, personal and political link very strongly mm. and these very tumultuous 20th century kind of appears through the fate of this one man. So what was your approach bringing these two together so closely? You know, it was forbidden love. Um, and uh, Mikolášek, um, he learned about himself that he's homosexual, he didn't accept it, but he needed it. He needed love, he yeah. needed closeness. And he fell in love with this, with this younger man. Uh, this younger man, uh, he was, I will tell today in our terms, bisexual, mm -hmm. because he had pretty happy marriage. Yes. But in the same time, he was attracted to this man. First, I think, because he gave him work and yeah. bread, and maybe it was even somehow interested that, okay, I didn't want, but I will pay you with my body for, for the situation. Mm -hmm but closely and we see that they become more than that that it's the mix from the František points of view it's mix of love and respect and tenderness yeah. and um, and care he became the caretaker of this older yes. man he feels when he's strong when he's weak when he needs help when he needs to be supported and the uh, older man is more violent and more selfish in this relationship, but at the same time, he is in deep inner conflict because his vision of himself as a powerful man, the man of uh, talent and, uh, and generosity, and the man who has to be respected, doesn't fit in, uh, in his mind and in the yeah. society, um, society judgment yes. uh, with his homosexuality. So uh, it is this struggle between who I am and who I yeah. would like to be. Uh, and um, it makes this relationship quite tragic. Yeah. Can you just very briefly tell us a bit about the, the socio-political context of, of homosexuality in this particular given time. Um, it's still 
punishable by law when, when the film takes place? Yes, I don't remember right now till which year in Czechoslovakia the homosexuality was punishable. I think probably till 60s. Yeah, it was yeah. around the second half. Uh, second but uh, the, story, the story goes between 38 and 58. Yeah. And um, during this time, yes, it was not acceptable. And Mikolasek also knew that because uh, the authorities uh, want to find something on him yes. because they don't like uh, that he's so independent in his activity, in his business, in his, in his way of living, in his way of healing, of um, uh, executing medicine some, of some kind and making money, you know, which are um, like strange money because they are not like from, of, you know, yeah. everything he didn't fit, especially in communist times. Uh, so he knew very well that if they will figure out about his homosexuality, it will be not only shame, but also it can it can give them the, the reason to to imprison him. Yeah. So and it you know it, in England homosexuality was punishable till eighties no? yes, or something yes. like that. So we are. We are in the situation where it's very fresh yeah. when it is accepted. But when, when I was, um, I was telling in some interview, when I was um, um, analyzing with the actor, main actor, the, yes. the role, uh, and I tried to, to, to tell him something about Mikolaszek, what I feel, this mix of the, you know, of the, of the talent and hubris and, you know, and, um, and, um, and the, um, um, generosity and uh, cowardice. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I qu quoted the, the case of uh, Kevin Spacey, who just was discovered <laughs> yeah. as as, um, as a sexual um, abuser. Uh, and I worked with Kevin on House of Cards, so um, yeah. I was observing him. Yes. Uh, and he was exactly very, you know, powerful, very, very. Dignified, very um, ambitious man with a strong ego, mm -hmm. somehow narcissistic ego, yeah. and in the same uh, time with the, with the great talent. Yes. Uh, so this talent gave him the feeling that he has the power to do whatever he wants, but in the same time he was unable to, to, to recognize, it means officially recognize, uh, yeah. his uh, homosexuality. Everybody yeah. knew about it, but officially it didn't exist. Yeah. Yes. And it was now, you know, when, when yeah. you know. In these so, times, yes. So it is very difficult for some men, and regardless uh, the legal situation, uh, to recognize that they are different, that they are yeah. not those machos who are, who are the people of power and who are, yeah. who are stronger than, than others. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I was also wondering about the visual language of the film. It's uh, very minimalistic. The camera is very often static. It's, um, yeah, there, there are also quite many silences in the film. So I was just wondering what motivated this aesthetic choice for this particular story. You know, the aesthetic choice mostly is coming from the story. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I, uh, when I was preparing with the cinematographer, mm, and the first days of the shoot, I was telling you, no, I don't want it to be stiff. I want the camera move a lot. Uh, and after we put the camera and we tried to move this camera when we've yeah. been rehearsing the scene and it didn't work. The camera didn't want to move. Yeah. This story needed this kind of the language. Yeah. And mostly my film are probably a bit eclectic because exactly I'm always trying to find the real the real nature of the story and the real voice of the story. And the style is coming at the you know, visual style and the camera work is coming somehow from inside of the story and it's not my uh, exterior concept. Yeah, yeah, I see. There was one very interesting uh, moment in the film where one of the characters says that the worst punishment is having a choice. And I felt mm. that in this particular context of communism and of so much conflicted feelings that was a very very interesting moment in the film can you tell us about this this thought about the role of choice in the life of these characters well it's more universal than only over the regime but yeah 
when you are living in the normal democratic society where the pressure and oppression from uh, from the outs from the from the power from the governments uh, or from the uh, legal system mm -hmm. uh, is not so strong uh, you can live your life somehow in natural way the choices yeah. are just the everyday choices if i will drink the coffee or, or milk or yes. if i will go um, with the tramway or with the car, you know, this kind yes. of choices, which are, of, of course, meaningless. And, but um, in some situation, um, when the regime is putting you in front uh, of, the, of the choice, which can be fatal yes. for yourself or for somebody, yeah. uh, the responsibility can be crushing. The people don't like this kind of choice. It's also why they become conformists. They are um, avoiding her heroism. Yeah. They don't want to struggle, you know. They yes. want to be accepted and not sometimes not seen, just to be transparent, just to yeah. exist. And um, his, this remark came after his, uh, uh, he, he was referring to the uh, memory from the yes. First World War when he had the order to shoot yes another person another yeah. person who was his colleague yeah. camarade and uh, he didn't really have the choice because you know the, yes. the choice was i will shoot i will be shot yes so he, he so he 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 killed but in the same moment when he was killing he started to feel some kind of the excitement so it means that this kind of the impossible choice is opening something with you, is changing you. Mm -hmm. That it's not only that you do something and after you are sorry and you, 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 you pray and yeah. you, you confess or whatever, you become a different person. Yes. So every choice has the moral consequences and the yeah. psychological consequences and sometimes very practical consequences. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this, especially in light of the very ending of the film. This is very interesting to hear because there is a very crucial choice to be to be made for, mm -hmm. for both of the main characters. So thank you so much for the interview. It was really a pleasure to have you here with us at the Teddy thank TV. You. And in the name of the Teddy TV, I wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Glad to be here.